that I'm a pretty battle-scarred veteran uh, in the sense that uh, for 40 years I've been in, or 30 years I've been in commercial vehicle industry, which is notorious for its uh, cyclical ups and downs. And uh, I have certainly uh, been through it, had some learnings, and uh, therefore it must have been uh, one reason why he chose to uh, call me even as a stepney. Uh, I'm not sure what I have to say to this class, which has, I'm sure, gone through uh, a lot of theories on HR. I'm sure some of you have practiced HR in the years in which you were employed. So I wasn't quite sure what I had to talk about, but I was reminded about uh, a book which I'm very fond of. And this book is about, uh, this book is by a person called Robert Fulgham. And the title of this book is that all you need to know you learnt in kindergarten. And that I think is a very, very important statement because it is true that every time that you come across an experience, a very complex kind of a problem in life, uh, it turns out that you actually knew the answer in a little rhyme or in a little moral lesson that you learnt whilst you were at the kindergarten. Life is essentially quite simple. And nature teaches a lot of solutions to us for very complex problems. And if I were to say, what is the most important aspect of management that you need to be alive to when you are faced with either a crisis or when you are faced with a move, an uptick from a crisis, essentially when you have to make changes, what's the most important aspect? And that, I think, is being together as an organization, the oneness of an organization, the togetherness of the organization. And you learned a very simple lesson uh, in school, at least I did. And this is about a story about a father who has a number of quarreling sons. And the story goes like this, that uh, the father wants to fix this problem, so he keeps uh, counseling his sons as to the importance of being together, uh, not to quarrel, uh, but they wouldn't listen until he thought about a demonstration for this and he said you please each one of you take a stick and then said you try and break the stick and everybody broke the stick and then he said that all of you come together and then have a bunch of sticks tied with a rope and now you try and break it and they couldn't now this is a lesson that all of us have learned very simple lesson like Robert Fulgham would say this holds the key for an organizational behavior in times of trials and tribulations. Peak people coming together, holding together, the oneness of that. I think that's a very, very important part. And how do you achieve that? To my mind, the first prerequisite for that is to communicate the issue, communicate the problem. Communication is, is again, an extremely critical function of the management any time a change is coveted. Nature again teaches us. There's amazing way by which the animal kingdom communicates with each other. We are blessed with the verbal communication and yet we mess it up. I don't know, you probably uh, play this game, the communication game in your classroom where somebody whispers at one end, uh, a secret and then after 20 others have taken the secret through and the last person then comes out with this message completely garbled. And we mess up our verbal communication. But amazingly nature shows us that animal kingdom communicates flawlessly without words. You have a pride of lions, you have a flock of deer, one trying to be the predator, the other trying to be moving away from the predator and there's tremendous communication between the, within the pride and within this flock. There's tremendous communication in shoals of fish. Natural scientists have proven that communication travels several hundred miles in the case of some fish when they sense danger. You see the coral reef is an amazing thing again. Coral reef does not have a central neural structure. It does not have a brain which transmits information, communication across. Yet, in a completely inexplicable way, the coral forms a beautiful symmetrical pattern. 
several miles of symmetrical patterns are formed by individual coral organisms with apparently no means of communicating with each other. Communication is a very, very important issue. I think it is important because of two reasons. One is when you communicate the problem to your organization, you lay in front of them the issues involved in tackling this problem, the need for a particular course of action to achieve the end objective, and therefore you set the organization on a rational course of discussion. It's not necessary that all of them will agree with this course of action to meet a particular challenge. But then once you have explained that to the organization, rational disagreements can be very easily dealt with. You know what can be dealt with rationally. Not all the disagreements are rational. Sometimes organization, people have irrational or emotional kind of disagreements. It's easy then to separate the rational from the emotional and deal with them separately as they would require to be dealt with. So transparently and clearly communicating a problem, whether it's a crisis or there's a change in the market environment in a dramatic fashion, it's important to relentlessly communicate within the organization. Get people to be alive about the details of the course of action that you're taking to meet this particular challenge. I've learned a lot of lessons on communication. When I took over as the chief executive, that was in 98-99, it was one of the worst periods that the company was going through. And mind you, this company, Ashok Leyland, is a 61-year-old company with an unbroken record of profitability, probably the only company in the, in the country, which has had since inception no interruption in terms of profits or dividends paid. And yet we had a huge challenge at the time that I stepped in. And I realized that it was going to be extremely important for the company to organization as a whole to understand the magnitude of the problem that we're facing. Because we were on a go mode, very much like the situation that we, have faced, that we have faced with about six or seven months ago when the meltdown happened. Prior to that, we were in a go mode with very high investments, every day watching capital investments being made, new capacities being created, new product introductions being done, and then you had the sudden fall, and the fall is precipitous. And on both occasions, we had a fall of something like 65% of the market collapsing, and then it continued for a few months. When you're accelerating, then you want the organization, organization to suddenly move over from an accelerator to a break. And it's not easy to get this communication going, particularly in a large organization. It gets, tends to get confused. You need, therefore, to articulate the, the type of challenge that you have the market environment change that has happened clearly enough for each member of the organization to be able to put in his effort in line with the objectives of meeting this challenge. So when we had this problem, we had a very recalcitrant union, trade union. The trade union in the previous year, when the market had begun to slow down, was in fact a major challenge because we did not get the workmen to agree that we needed to work short days. But within a few days after I stepped in, I spent a long time talking to individually. I think we had about 16,000 people at the time. And I must have spent about two weeks going around each plant, collectively meeting them, individually meeting the opinion leaders, talking to them about what was facing the organization, and the need, therefore, to change the ways. What was not possible to achieve by compensation, by law, by going to the government, was possible to be achieved by sheer communication. The union agreed that they will work short days, take half the salary, but bank whatever was paid in excess of what they were working as a separate bank of working days, which will be used later on when the market went up to be encashed without payment. And this was an extraordinary turning point in our relationship with our trade union. It has since then continued. We had much less of a problem when this time when we had a precipitous fall. Communication, therefore, I think is a very important issue.